Coming up on the Open Alliance Show 7407, Wired Boards are back to showcase their incredible progress they've been doing throughout this season. Wired Boards, every single time we have them on, showcases something really, really cool, and we're no doubt this week is not an exception to that. So let's talk about some of the cool things they're going to be covering. Uh, their mirror bot and also a bit more of their comp bot. Uh, they have a really cool mechanism they call their tent uh, for their uh, trap mechanism and how it integrates with their climbing, which I think is really awesome, and how they're approaching doing this to make sure they get a lot of scores for that. They've also done some really cool testing with some custom TPU wheels, so we'll go through how that testing has worked out versus all the other types of COTS wheels that most robot teams are looking at doing on the market as well too. And of course, we'll be going into uh, different things with their code and also a bit of a glimpse on their current COTS bot as well too. So let's dive into Wired Boars here on the Open Alliance Show. The FRC Premiere Night is back for Crescendo on Saturday, February 24th. Submit up to a two-minute video showcasing your robot in celebration of this build season. Submissions are due by Thursday, February 22nd. Submit your reveal video and get submission requirements at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere24. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. And joining us on the Open Alliance Show, we're welcoming back 7407 Wired Boars coming in from uh, Connecticut. Uh, I hope you've been following this team on their OA blog. They do such an incredible job documenting their progress as well. They got a snow day today, so we're going to have people calling in from all over the place uh, talking about their current progress, so we can't wait to hop right in. But we do have one of our students on right now. So hello, if you don't mind, uh, introduce yourself. Let us know what you're doing your team, and we're going to be jumping right into a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah, hi, I'm Nicholas. I'm a CAD team member and also control systems leader. And uh, I just wanted to highlight how far we've come in robot assembly since our uh, last meeting, so uh, last OA show. So when we uh, met last time, we were basically just uh, fully finalized the CAD on the elevator. Since then, we've had basically a CAD-a-thon, and we've gone from full robot CAD to having our mirror bot assembled. So what we're doing this year is we're actually having a one robot just for practice, just so we can hand it off to the programmers as fast as possible, and a competition bot. So if the slide is showing right now on the right-hand side, you can see the competition bot, and that's the fully painted product that we're going to bring to our week one event, if all things go to plan. But for the mirror bot wise, we basically, at this point, we've fully assembled the robot. We've gone from elevator, then we went to intake, and then we assembled the shooter as well. And last weekend, we uh, wired the robot off, and then a couple days ago, two days ago, we handed off to programming. Um, at this point, we just received a shipment of Krakens um, from West Coast Products, so we're, we're really uh, excited to shove those on the robot and hopefully get that run in the in a couple days. So you said Mirbot, by the way. So is this robot like completely flipped, or does it have an evil name or anything like that? Uh, it does not have an evil name, but we have not yet named the robot, so they might get two different names. But in terms of functionality, it's exactly the same. Uh, it just got not as thought out in some ways, especially when it comes to wiring. Um, like we're just trying to get it up as running as fast as possible. Hey, give me a quick breakdown on the. You mentioned you did like a, a catathon, so to speak. Can you give me a quick breakdown of what that entailed? Yeah. So at that point, we had basically fully designed the elevator, but everything else wasn't necessarily fully thought out. So when it came to packaging things like the slip down mechanism for the tent, which Garrett will talk about later and the shooter, we hadn't really thought about that. So what happened is we sat down over a weekend and worked together as a team, getting our full like robot sketch done uh, to make sure all of the integration worked. And then from there, we broke out basically into groups working on separate mechanisms and uh, fully catted out those. So by the end of that weekend, we had basically made sure that everything was going to work. So from there, we started like basically cutting the basic parts. So it's allowed us to basically assemble the robot as fast as possible. No, I love the thought process that's gone into that and uh, how your team's approaching it uh, as well, too. As we mentioned, uh, you talked about the tent. I'd like to hear a little bit more about this, so I think we're bringing in somebody else for that. But uh, let's just hop right into what this tent mechanism is. I feel like wired boards every time I talk to you, you got something new and uh, improved or something different as well. So let's hop into what that is. Hi, uh, I'm Garrett. I'm going to be talking about the tent. Um, I'm not there in person so i hope that i'm on the stream right now you are good um you are good. The tent, yeah so the tent is like part of our overall climb scheme um the main part of our climb is we have these hooks that move up and down on our three-stage elevator um and those are able to initially grab the chain by about an inch of clearance or so and 
when we retract our elevator, they'll be able to pass the chain off to some, some stationary hooks that are attached to our drive rails. Um, and then when we climb up, you can see on the left photo here, um, we'll just be able to hold the chain at, like very low to our robot, um, and which allows us to re-extend our elevator and get really high up. But one of our fears here was that we wouldn't be able to con precisely control our angle. Um, so we would be, it would be very difficult and very slow to score into the trap. But so that's why we added this uh, tenting or reaction mechanism that presses off the bottom of the stage and adds a reaction force to like get us to the same angle every single time very quickly. Um, yeah. And the idea here was that we could also adjust the angle, as you can see on the right, and then adjusting that angle will adjust the angle between the elevator and the trap, allowing us to achieve like tons of different ways of scoring into the trap with our, the back of our shooter there. What is your uh, your current timing, or at least your thought process on timing, in getting a climb and then scoring on trap? Like, have you uh, have you thought about like what what how quickly you want to do that at the end of a match? Um, honestly, I'm not too sure. We definitely wanted to be able to do it in less than like 15 seconds, I'd say, optimally. Um, but obviously, as quick as we can get it done. Is, um, and this way like our thought process behind adding this to reduce the time is that we won't have to swing um because we will be attached at two points at the chain and the bottom of the stage so like no matter what it'll be more precise and faster than not having this mechanism yeah so when you're climbing up you're, you're essentially having a contact piece where as you mentioned you're not swinging then right that's the whole idea behind it yeah and we can get to a we can have the center of gravity on the opposite side of the hooks because our elevator is going to be quite heavy because it's got a, a lot of stuff on it. So we were predicting that our center of mass is going to be um, behind the hooks, like on the wrong side of the stage from the hooks. So having that tenting mechanism out there to add a reactionary force uh, downwards will help us get to the right angle, toward, like angling towards the stage rather than away from it. Working is the intake and the tent, the outer roller of the intake and the tent are on the same uh, pivot point and they use the same motor so if we can play that video um we can show how a little ratchet and pawl mechanism works to lock the intake down as soon as it's fully deployed and then after that point any motion of that motor will end up driving the tenting mechanism out rather than the uh, intake because the intake's now locked in place by that pawl Awesome. No, I appreciate that, that extra insight on that. So thank you so much uh, for that. Now we're ready to jump into intake. So let's go into uh, current progress and where you're at uh, for that right now. We got a new student coming in as well, too. Hi, my name is Asher and I worked on um, catting the intake. And something we were really worried about was assembly for the intake because we only wanted one motor to power everything. Everything is corrected, connected by pulleys and belts. So changing one thing becomes incredibly difficult when everything's connected. So we worked really hard on making sure that the process of doing this was going to be really easy. So one thing that we did is a lot of our spacers are slightly different sizes, but the that size different matters. And instead of having to measure like match up to other things, instead, as you can see on this picture on the left, we just labeled it W2.1 or W1 or one half or 0.6 when those spacers get really close in size. That way someone who may not know how to check the CAD sizes who are there in the moment can easily see in the labeled spacer and know exactly which one to use. In addition, we also know that if something breaks during a competition on this intake, it's going to be really difficult to fix. So to make sure that we don't lose time during competitions, the intake is mounted to our belly pan and our frame with four nut blocks that can be really easily accessible from the robot. That way, if the intake breaks, we can quickly unscrew the intake from those nut blocks and then switch out an entirely new intake. So we're going to go to travel to comms with two intakes. Very cool, Matt. And, oh, sorry. And That's here right, is ahead. a little video of the intake working with the index and the shooter which we like a lot. So it's pretty smooth. We're really proud of all the integration work that we did. Yeah, that, that does look really, really smooth on that process. Can we put that video one more time just so we can see uh, how that looks on there? Um, as you're going through, you know, we, there's a lot of teams that 
we've talked to on the OA show and seen another ones where they are doing many, like kind of this S curve bend or many others. I really like the way that your process where you're doing a couple, but it's very like minor to how much that, how much deflection is happening on that. So I think it's a really great approach uh, that your team has taken. Cool. Um, so up next, I think we're going to go into the shooter mechanism. Is that right? Yeah. My name's William and I'm going to talk first about the shooter mechanism. So our shooter is right now just, uh, the culmination of all of our testing. So we've gone with four inch flywheels because we found it shoots much more consistently. And even though it makes packaging a bit harder and also in order to be, um, have the most consistent shots, we've used belts on the side for the indexer. So that means that when we shoot the, the note kind of squishes in. Yeah. Um, is there a camera that we could see it? Okay. And the note kind of squishes in so that it leaves from the indexer, which means that the indexer's movement won't affect the shooting, which hopefully will make shooting more consistent. And the shooter also has a box tube um, frame, which will make it hopefully very stiff. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about some 3D printed wheels that we've designed um, over the off season. So in order to test a bunch of var variations of this wheel, we've also devised a wheel tester for it, which you can see um, here. And we've also tested a lot of other different different wheels, like SDS wheels and um, Colson's, which means that it, this is, information is useful even to teams without 3D printed wheels. So first, talking about the TPU wheels, we noticed, noticed that the TPU wheels care a lot about what type of carpet that they're on. So if they're on really new carpet, they perform amazingly. They can get coefficients of friction of up to 1.7, and that's um, we've observed that in competitions where we ran it and we could push around robots far above our weight class. But they tend to suffer when the carpet's very worn. And that's actually something that we mentioned, noticed with the SDS wheels as well. So the SDS wheels, they tend to do better on worn carpet and worse on new carpet, which could affect how teams run their autos and like how the auto runs over the course of an event as the carpet wears down. So that's something that teams should take note of. Um, and also the, oh, <laughs> and also we tested Colson wheels and we met, we found that they don't measure super well. Um, and it seems like they do really well on polycarb, but on carpet, they don't have a lot of coefficient of friction. And for those who have not yeah, used also, uh, TPU before, TPU is a very, like, uh, pliable material. Like, it's very squishy, right? In many cases, a low durometer type uh, type thing for that. What if, um, when you've seen that, like, did you, are there different TPUs you can test uh, for that as well, too? Or did you just have one that you went with the whole time? Um, we actually ended up testing two. One from Polymaker and the other one from Bamboo Lab. So they were rated for both 95A hardness, but the Polymakers was much, much worse in terms of wearing it wore down almost immediately while the bamboo labs wear down almost none. So there's a lot of variance between um, suppliers, which is interesting. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, anything else on, on your TPU wheels you want to talk about? This is, uh, by the way, uh, this data you put out uh, as well in your OA blog is great. So teams, make sure you dive into this uh, so you can learn more about uh, some of the results and uh, use it for your own team. Yeah. Another thing that's very interesting is that teams are probably replacing SDS tread too often, there's no big performance hit from the SDS being worn. Like from be it being brand new to being like almost just like completely flat, there's almost no measurable significant difference in how it performs. So maybe it's not worth it to swap out the treads during comp competitions. Uh, by the way, I'm also interested in what constitutes as fluffed carpet versus non-fluffed. So essentially, um, because we couldn't bring in new carpet every time we the carpet would get stamped down over testing so we would fluff it back up to get it back into a more normal state that i guess you would see during a um a game sure like can you can you actually describe like what did you do to actually like fluff it so to speak like it's just moving the carpet or like what do you actually have to do for that um we kind of just like ruffled it Okay. So like, I wasn't sure we have a special the, cup, carpet fluffer tool or something like that, you know? No, because the carpet would just like stick down on itself. So we just pulled it back up. 
No, that's really cool. And I appreciate all the testing that your team has put into this. And like I said, teams, make sure you're following uh, 7407 on their OA blog uh, so you can get even more information, ask questions on their blog as well, too. Lots of great stuff on there, both there and on the OA Discord. Um, I know uh, as we wrap up, there's some things programming-wise we want to talk about, too. Um, let's walk through uh, what your current status is from, from programming. And uh, uh, by the way, I love that you got the camera on the robot that we can take a, a look on this right away. This is so cool what your assembly looks like so far. Uh, hey, this is uh, Sebastian and uh, I'm Cyrus. Yeah, so we're back again uh, just to give you guys a programming update. Um, so yeah, two days ago, kind of like what Huber said, we got the robot. Um, so now we're just starting to test a bunch of our subsystems and uh, adding uh, final hardware values. Um, so this is a quick video of our intake system right now. Um, so we were testing um, different speeds and different values we're going to set to the intake. Um, so this is just us running the um, note in and it's stopping right there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a lot of, uh, well, yesterday, we got it yesterday. So that, that was mainly what we did yesterday. Um, but yeah, um, we also, we're gonna, so we're gonna talk a little bit about um, a couple of the other things we're gonna do in the future as well. Um, so yeah, um, let's move to the next slide. Uh, oh, there we go, okay. Um, so we're actually gonna be, uh, a lot of what we're gonna be doing this year is focused on like odometry. Um, whether that means different um, mechanisms in teleop and autonomous. Um, so for a couple examples, like under the stage. Um, so actually, if we move over to the um, elevator, or the whole robot system, the mirror bot, I call him Dave. I don't really call him Dave, but we're going to call him Dave today. <laughs> All right. Um, so <laughs> so if, you, if you go, if you look over here to this uh, sort of whole mechanism, uh, the elevator raises up and down, which is great, but it's also really terrible for like going under the stage um because you know when we go into a stage we don't want this thing to hit um so um we're gonna be using a lot of odometry based um autonomous mechanism systems so like if we're if we're going if we're getting underneath the stage we're gonna start putting it down um you know different types of things like that if we get the note uh we're gonna start running it in uh asap if we can um also like automatic flywheel spool ups uh, a lot of different things like that um and yeah that's just something that we want to really drive an importance to this year because um uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just really, it's going to be a really, well, we've noticed it's going to be a pretty intensive game in terms of different controls and things you can do. Um, we just want to make it a little bit easier for the whole drive team and operations spectrum. So, yeah. No, great updates uh, for your team overall uh, with the uh, program. By the way, this is a phenomenal looking robot so far. So really cool that we get a chance to see this uh, on screen as well, too. Um, before we let you all go, anything else uh, from anywhere on your team's progress, team's robot, or just team status that you want to give us an update on before we let you get back? Uh, yeah, we have we have one more programming slide. I'll just change it real quick. Um, so this is just continued improvements. Uh, we've switched up our GitHub quite a bit from last year. And we have a new merging system to prevent a lot of errors where code goes from its initial uh, initial branch to, te to dev and then to main. Now the initial branch is just brand new code, like a subsystem uh, that's been com that's been untested and it's just being written. Uh, once that code is merged into dev, that means all of its tests are working, but the actual robot isn't tested yet or the robot isn't built. Now we made a lot of our subsystems before the robot was built. So we use our testing mechanisms to build, uh, to test our code before um, deploying it to dev. And then our main branch is when the code from dev is tested on the actual hardware robot and is working. And our GitHub is also linked above. Well, your team is competing week one, so that's coming up very, very soon uh, for you all. So we can't wait to see how Wired Boars does uh, this season. Thanks for coming on once again with us as well, too. And Wired Boars, good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you for having us. The FRC Premiere Night is back for Crescendo on Saturday, February 24th. Submit up to a two-minute video showcasing your robot in celebration of this build season. Submissions are due by Thursday, February 22nd. Submit your reveal video and get submission requirements at firstupdatesnow.com slash premiere24. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.